In this video, we're going to see if installing a TRD rear sway bar makes any difference on a second gen Sequoia. Stop it! We're not saying that on camera. <laughs> What's the benefit of installing a TRD sway bar in one of these bad boys when it's not really a TRD vehicle? Well, what I'm looking to get here is more confident cornering handling out of our rig. It is a little top heavy with a rooftop tent. It does weigh 6,000 pounds. I drive this car mostly on the highway, so I want the back end or the sway of the vehicle to be a little bit more planted on my day to day. And there's a side upgrade where I'm hoping to get benefits of, according to this video from Tinker's Adventure. For me personally, no front sway bar plus a stiffer rear sway bar is the best compromise. Well, if you have a stiffer rear sway bar than you have in the front, you might get a little bit more travel off-road. Now, this is not gonna be a test in an off-road environment to uh, duplicate his video. We also don't have ramps in the driveway, but by adding a little bit more cornering stability in the rear, it will give me more confidence to take off the front sway bar when Emily and I go off-roading and we need just a little bit more travel off-road. So might as well throw the TRD sway bar in now to take care of 90% of our on-road driving. And if we need that 10% extra off-road, at least we got the TRD sway bar on. Enough of me talking in the driveway, let's just jump right into the install because it's gonna be a doozy. I got this genuine Toyota Motorsports rear sway bar shipped to my house just for the rear sway bar was 132 bucks it was on sale and you can see this is an authentic trd part you got the toyota tag here we got trd on the side here and we got trd in the center and it comes in this sick red color so i'm pretty stoked on it actual trd part um the install shouldn't be too ha too bad i know a lot of people drop the center or the rear section of the drive shaft to throw it on Hopefully, fingers crossed, my rear sway bar end links play nice in this video and I can take them off. Lots of times I end up chopping those bad things, uh, chopping those things off because they don't play nice. But if I can get both rear sway bar end links off, I can get this bad boy on and we can continue with the install. So without further ado, let's just get under the rig, get some tools out and see what we can get done. In order to get the rear sway bar off, you're going to have rear sway bar end links in front of the rear tires. You're going to have uh, two rear sway bar brackets that are poly bushings here that go into the frame. And you're going to have to drop the rear drive shaft at the pumpkin back there. Um, I'm prepared to do that. If you're also looking at the under frame of my car and you're saying, my God, that's so greasy. It's because I just applied a whole bunch of fluid film on here. It's the summer here in Washington. Everything's dry. That was a great time to apply fluid film all over the undercarriage of the rig uh, to prevent winter rusting and fluid film will help break some of these nasty bolts loose so let's see if we can get to these bad boys um, I'm not optimistic rear sway bar end links love to break on me it's kind of a thing they love doing that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and attack the end links from up here first get them off the frame and then hopefully we could drop the rear sway bar out and then take the rest of them off when they're when the when the sway bar is on the ground so let's just get to it. My worst nightmare has happened and the end link to be removed has seized. You can see there's a ton of rust on here. Yeah, it's a little shiny from all the fluid film, but it's quite rusty. And so um, my trick to get it off is either a reciprocating saw on the back of the end link here or get one of those vibrating saws that zzz buzzes and you could just buzz the bit, uh, the head of the bit off. Odds are the end links on your Sequoia, if it's as old as ours, are going to be rusted. And so just uh, be careful on uh, these might seize up. And then another thing that might seize up too are the bolts holding in the sway bar brackets to the frame. While I did coat these in fluid film last night, um, there is rust that gets in the frame. You can kind of see a little spot of rust here. And on the inside of the frame, it really makes those bolts a little uh, difficult to remove. It's very easy to snap these bad boys. They're just uh, 12 mils. You could literally just like snap them off. Break these bolts off in the frame. You really aren't left with many options to bolt uh, the sway bar back in there, which uh, kind of a pain in the ass, but hopefully it doesn't uh, bite us in the ass too much as we move on. All right, we got the end links removed. As you can see, this side was super rusted and it required being cut off. And then we moved on to the sway bar brackets and every single bolt 
has been rusted to the frame and has broke. All four bolts have snapped off in the frame. So, technically, we have no sway bar end link, or no sway bar bracket bolts on both sides of the sway bar. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the beauty of having a rust bucket from Canada is your bolts will seize inside your frame. I'm sure I could have like throw, uh, threw some PB blaster on the inside of the frame there, maybe angle it on the inside to get it off, but now I'm going to have to drill out all these holes and re-tap my frame so I could put these, um, these bushings back on. It shouldn't be too hard, it's a nice angle in here, in fact it's quite relaxing, so I should be able to get it, but um, uh, the next step I'm going to do is drop the drive shaft right here. These bolts look healthy and these nuts look healthy, so it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Of course, the drive shaft's going to fall on me when I do this, but that'll allow me to remove the sway bar and then we can move uh, move on to drilling out the frame. Oh, fuck. Dirty lens. Now that we got the drive shaft off, make sure you put your parking brake on. I almost died. Uh, we should be able to remove this guy and get her out. All right, I got one of the holes drilled out, not tapped. And uh, we're working on the second one here. So we got one down and three more to go. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm drilling out the uh, rusted bolt that's in the frame. Then uh, I don't mind if I mar up the threads in there. I'm then going to put in a tap and re-tap a new thread pattern in there. And if this doesn't work, then I'll, uh, I can move on to throwing nut certs in there. And at least I can have nut certs that'll hold the bracket. And then if that doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll grind the frame out and then literally just weld the bracket on because once I put this bar on, I'm planning on never taking it off. <laughs> Okay, we're back in business, baby. Three days and two packs of cobalt drill bits later. We got all the bolts from the sway bar bushing brackets drilled out. Now it's time to tap the holes. I'm gonna use M8 by 1.25 thread and hopefully it fits in the holes that I drilled. I didn't drill them too big. If the, the tap doesn't fit in there, then I'll just get like a bigger tap, like an M10 by 1.0 or 1.25 and then uh, I'll just tap the entire frame. But it looks like there's like a little bit of an insert in here that I could actually use. Um, and uh, let's see if the tapping goes well. And if the tapping goes well, we're in the home stretch, baby. All we gotta do is put everything back together. So fingers crossed we tap these bad boys in here and we can move on with the install. Let's get some lube going. Here we go, we'll do this one first. Let's see if the taparoni fits in there. Oh, it's gonna be tight. I don't know. Okay. Let's see if we can get her nice and even as we go in. I'm not the best at tapping. There's already someone in the comments I can guarantee you who's better than this than me. But, uh,. We'll see if we can get it. It might, meet, it might need a, the next size up. It seems a little loose, but uh, we'll see if we can get it in. All right, this one seems to be doing just a little bit better than the first one. Oh, yeah, baby. Nice. We'll take that. All right. All right. We're back on our two feet instead of underneath the car. Whew, I'm tired, man. Let me show you the difference between the two bars. When you're upgrading your rear sway bar, your first instinct is, well, is the upgrade larger diameter than the factory bar? And with the TRD bar, no. The diameter is exactly the same. The only difference is the factory bar is hollow and the TRD bar is not hollow. And so that means the twisting force of this bar is a lot stronger than the factory bar. Um, there are some people online who have weighed the difference. I think we're at about a eight to 12 pound difference between the two. I'm not sure 
don't quote me on that. Um, but really what I wanted to do was stiffen up the rear of the car so when we're turning it's not so sway, but allow the front to be a little loosey-goosey. It's like a, an autocross car or a drift car, it's the same thing as when you let the front travel a little bit more, you get a little bit more front bite, um, or at least in theory, and uh, the back stays a little bit more controlled. Now, I might even take off my front bar when I go off-roading, and so having a little bit more force in the back will help me keep things stable and allow these front johnnies to articulate on the trail. So um, that's one of my big reasons for upgrading. Plus, I want it to handle a little bit better on the street. I just don't like how it's just so tipsy all the time. A rooftop tent doesn't help, but I mean, just in general. Sequoia is jacked up on 37, so let's uh, let's stiffen the rear a little bit. All right, that's the difference between the TRD bar and the factory bar. And now that we've gotten everything tapped out and I've cleaned out those threads, hopefully they hold, I'm gonna go ahead and move this to underneath the car, get some red Loctite so the uh, bolts don't come out uh, undone. And uh, let's throw this bad boy back on the car. One thing we're also going to do is grease the inside of the factory sway bar bushings. Uh, I didn't get new bushings here. These bushings look fine. They don't look cracked. They're just a little dusty. But they're totally in good shape. In fact, this one's pretty good too. I mean, I can't believe it, but uh, this is a good bushing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw some grease on the inside here with my good old-fashioned grease gun. Throw it on the outside of the stopper here. Pop it on, and then we can throw on our sway bar bushing brackets and hopefully at least see if this will hold its own weight back in the vehicle with the threads that I just tapped. I think that's it, baby. All right, we got them finger tight. Now, ever so gently, without a gun, we're gonna see if we can get these in and having them hold. Well, but it looks like the back one is plenty tight. The front one, it ain't there. But um, we could probably throw a helicoil in there if that uh, if that's not playing nicely today. All right, I uh, I drilled the hole a little bit bigger, and now we got a helicoil tap going on in here, and uh, this is definitely the friction I'm used to. The other holes were much easier than this, and so I made myself like a nice little tapping apparatus here. Got a uh, ratchet extension down to the helicoil stud or down to the um, threading stud, and then I'm just taking my time getting it in, and then uh, after I get this nice and thread it out. I have a feeling these threads are going to be just amazing. All right, you can see I dropped the helicoil in there. And the ultimate test will be to see if my bolt works wherever we ended up throwing that. There it is. All right, the ultimate test will be to see if my M8 by 1.25 bolt works. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Now we can really torque this bad boy down. All right, we got the sway bar mounted with my helicoils. Oh, that was a pain in the ass. Every step of this has been a pain in the ass, but now it's time to throw in the end links. We got brand new ones because we chopped up the old ones, and uh, that should make the car ride a lot better. Uh, hoping these bolts hold, but uh, we'll see. Let's throw this bad boy on the car and tidy up. It'll be a 19 nut and a 7 mil Allen on the inside. And hopefully this doesn't strip because it's all brand new metal. So uh, just throw it on like so, clink, clink, and it should be good to go. All right, we got her on and uh, on this side, on the driver's side. And now it's just a matter of cranking out on the 19 nuts that are um, self-locking nuts on the outside here. Uh, I mean, you can get different end links. They even make extended ones for some of the first gen. So I, I'm sure someone's going to make extended ones for second gens pretty soon. Almost buttoning up this side a little bit. Let me just throw on the uh, Allen key on the inside so I can really crank this down. And then we'll go do the other side. Um, and then we can move on to throwing the drive shaft back on.
All right, and after you've made a mess of your garage and taken three and a half days to install this thing with repairing rusted out bolts and throwing in nut certs and drilling and tapping your frame, the TRD sway bar is on. It's nighttime, time to go inside. We'll do a drive tomorrow to see what it's really like. All right, I got a little bit of a break in between meetings and this is gonna be the first drive of the car with the new sway bar on. And I'm backing out of the driveway now and there's a little bit of, there are a couple flex points in the driveway as I back up. So I'm gonna see how this thing does going out of the driveway. If those bolts hold, see if this makes any bit of a difference at all driving the car. Let's see if we can keep going and feel a difference. Let's go. Of course, there's a lot of traffic when I try and do this test, but um, we'll see what's up. All right, we're coming up to a corner. We're going up pretty fast. Let's see how she handles around the corner. Oh, wow. Night and day difference. Wow. Under load while cornering, the car feels incredible. Wow. All right, here we go. Let's see how she's doing uphill around a corner at 25 miles. There's a lot of people, so I can't go that fast, but let's see here. Oh, dude, that is incredible. Look at this. It feels so much better. Just around a corner, the back feels so much more planted. Wow. The going over bumps and stuff, it doesn't feel that much better, but like going around a corner, oh my God, the back just feels so much more planted. All right, here's a big sweeper. Let's see how she does. I'm gonna try and keep my speed up. It's a little damp too, but oh my God. Dude, this is so good. This is so good. Wow. Overall impressions of the TRD rear sway bar upgrade. Dude, if you can get your hands on one and you get a dealership to ship you one, put it on. Um, be, be warned, if your rig has rust, it's gonna be a pain to install, but if your rig doesn't have any rust on it or is a little bit newer than mine, you're gonna have a great time installing this. It should take about an hour or two. Huge, huge cornering upgrade for the Toyota Sequoia. I can't wait to take it off-road and see what it does out there. I still have some work to do today, so I gotta jump back into some Zoom calls, but wow, wow, what a cornering upgrade that this thing has made. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna see more Sequoia content or more RAV4 content, let us know and we'll bring them to you. Other than that, I gotta get home and get back to work and I'll see you guys on the next one.